Cole said it was an army of Akashi. What will happen to How us? are we supposed to do our duty when the hills are... Clive? But if you're here, where the hell is everyone else? Don't tell me. They're all right. But it's a long story. You lot don't do things by halves, do you? Well, at least everyone's still breathing. Now, as for these writings, I'm sorry to say, Clive, but if you had those, you'd be... Sitting under a pile of rubble, I know. But we were able to save a few bits and pieces from the ruins, most of which ended up being used to build this place. The more personal items we gave to the next of kin. In the case of Sid's things, that would have been mid. Then I'll check the workshop. This looks like it's from Sid's old diary. Uh, Mitchell already have read it. I'd better keep looking. Well, what do we have here? Oh, uh, Sid's pipes. Something tells me Mid won't be needing these. I remember seeing this doll in Sid's cellar. I wonder if it was Mid's. Huh. What's this tucked inside it? Sid's best invention. Hmm. That sounds promising. So Sid hid something in Mid's first opus. No what would that be? Perhaps Otto might know. Deaf as a banshee, unless you mean the orchestrion. She couldn't have been more than what, 11, 12, when she cobbled that thing together. It mean, surprised us all, not least her dad. You should have seen how proud he was of the little scamp. What's that battered old box have to do with anything? I think Sid may have hidden something inside it. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Those two and their bloody treasure hunts. Half the things in the hideaway were hidden one time or another. How are we supposed to do our duty when the hills are crawling with a cash? Paul said it was an army of a cash. What will happen to me and the others? I didn't break it. Well, I didn't break it. What didn't you break? We didn't break nothing. We definitely didn't break the orchestron. <sighs> What's wrong with it? It's broken. Except when it isn't. See? And you had nothing to do with this? Nope. Nothing. We just wanted to listen to 
all the songs at once. So we press all the buttons. Like this. started playing when I removed this. Whatever it is. Well, don't look at me. I can tell you it's important, though. Sid showed it to me once and said as much. Said it was the stuff dreams were made of. <sighs> Let's just hope it's the stuff ships are made of as well. Indeed. Let's see if we can make some dreams come true. Just the two I was looking for. Aye, aye. Who's a patient? Actually, yes. The Crown Prince just left. Dion left? Unless you've another word for stood up and walked off. Yes, left. He did have the decency to leave a message with Obelis before commandeering one of his dinghies. Should we go after him? No. We're not the Prince's keepers. He's free to do as he sees fit. I'd rather he did so in bed. His wounds are nowhere near healed. Much like yours, I suspect. Otto told me what happened in Canver. What is it with this realm's princes and their aversion to rest? Uh, ask me when I get back. Though I may be some time. Then at least try to stay safe. And if that fails, try to stay alive, eh? Every moment I waste here, the further the flagship sails. Clive? My dad had it all worked out. He'd be proud of you, Mid. His writings may have helped, but this achievement is all yours. <laughs> Can we catch them? The Ine is one of the largest, fastest vessels ever built. And it won't help she has the wind at her back. Any other ship would be hard pressed to keep pace with her, let alone reel her in. But this isn't any other ship. 
This is the Enterprise! And the world's never seen anything like my dad's engine. It certainly hasn't. Clive, what do you know of Barnabas Tharm? Only what the bards sing. That he sailed to ash from southern lands. That it was his mastery of the blade which won him the throne. And that his sword, Odin's sword, can sever the very threads of creation. But don't lose any sleep over a last tilt. We'll do what we must to survive. What we must. The light! I thought this curve was meant to be hidden! Mid! Company! Hey? We'll hold them off until the ship is ready. But hurry! Bullets! All hands! Man your stations! Everyone with me? Was easy enough. All right, you lousy lot. Get your asses on board. She's ready to sail. You heard the captain. <laughs> Clive. Confounded. 
Then it is as I feared. Sleipnir is no man, but a creation of Odin. Phoenix's fiery fundament! Have you no normal enemies? Up for another round? Of course we are. Right, Lord Rosfield? My boy, there was a time people called me the Executioner. Or was it my ass? No matter, heads will roll all the same. Mate, new plan! You leave, we follow! Follow? Swimming, are you? Oh, bugger me! Way anchor! Engine's dead slow ahead! Have care, my friend. It is not blood that runs through an engine's veins. These foes will not fall before you, but they will fall Like oaks before a woodman's axe. Good thing I brought one! How long are we meant to keep this up? As long as it takes. Unless you have a better one. We have already killed at least five of the bastards. Fuck it! Let's do the lot! What do you want? Uh, 
That's quite a mess you've made. And wholly unnecessary. <sighs> you are my offering to Muthos. I would not see you damaged. I don't suppose Mid has a spare engine. <laughs> Since you rose from the grave, my fortunes have plummeted. Are you absolutely certain of this quest of yours, Clive? The foes you face are as terrible as they are numerous. Aye, and they'd have us live and die on their terms, which should answer your question. Ah. You have that same stubborn look as your father did when he set his mind to something. On the battlefield, I am but a single axe. A deadly one, mind, but a single one nonetheless. Yet what you require is a thousand, and I believe my old friend in Brandalar can provide them. Take care, Clive. I have many more tales of your father's exploits to share. And I cannot very well do that if you're dead. Again. Good luck, Uncle. And may fair winds attend you. As for you, Joshua, take care. I shall do my best, Uncle. Farewell, my nephews. When next you see me, it shall be with an army at my back. Cheerio! <laughs> 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 <sighs> Do keep up, my boy! Well, we can't have him showing us up now, can we? We would never hear the end of it. What have I done? My lord!
near in Walud. But any ship heading north has to round Zemeckis and put through the narrow. Maintain our current bearing north northeast, and we'll catch the Black Galleon before she vanishes again. What's to prevent her from circling around Ash from the south? With these winds in those waters, it's taken forever and a fortnight to reach Stone here. Mid knows what she's talking about, Clive. Better than any of us lot, anyway. I say we do as she tells. Sails on the horizon. She's ours. Look alive, boys! Pull ahead! And keep those furnaces fed! Aye, aye. Do you feel that, Jill? Let's see what this skill can do. Where one leads, so does the other follow. The bond of consciousness which joins them condemning both to the same fate. Yet my every attempt to strike it from their hearts serves only to tighten its hold.
fights at last. You're not going to die. Watch your spell. I need to hurry.
before me but a guttering flame. But to where? survive. This consciousness in which you coil your feeble souls is grown thick with desperation, and thus has my master turned to my blade.
the world will soon be painted in black. And all that live shall gather in death's autumn wake. Not if we remove the cause of this misery. Not if we destroy the last of the Mother Crystals and restore balance to the world. Come. Do you truly think it's so simple? The Blight is inevitable. Not even the Almighty might stop its endless march. Your efforts will avail us naught. Naught, that is. But suffering. You must embrace the truth, Nithos. Accept your place with the Lord. Keep it. As long as there's a chance, there's a choice. Never led astray by your blind resolve. Now, it is time you learn the inevitability of your divine fate, however much it may hurt. Get as far away as you can. Clive, no. Trust me, Jill.
life! Do you not see? Your iron will weighs you down, dragging you ever further from your purpose. And what is my purpose? Mythos. Who are we? What are the dominance? The breath of the Creator still warm on our lips. We carry his light that we might guide the masses in his name. We are but mighty acts of God. We are more than that! You would be nothing without what he has granted you. The power we wield is his, and yet every time we draw upon it, it wears away at our very being. It breaks us. It unmakes us. That its immaculate aspect might reveal itself. The Icon. It is too much for even his chosen few. Apart from you, Mythos. You wield the might of many. Yet your body does not answer for its avarice. What are you saying? What I am saying... ...is that we dominance are a means to an end. We were created for you. That you might drink deep of our strength and thereby fulfill your divine purpose. Which is... To feed. As you would know, could you only look beyond the walls of your prison of self-regard. As long as you choose to ignore this, you shall never penetrate my defenses. Still, you may take solace in the fact that you are not alone in your plight. The chains of volition shackle all of mankind, but there is yet cause to rejoice. For the Lord, in his mercy, has taken pity on his flawed creations, and shall see them restored to their proper forms. And what exactly would that be? Why, loyal servants to God. No. Manners, Lord Rossfield? They are men, like you and me. Albeit ones uh, unburdened by the wills that drive our kind to madness. They are pure. They are... divine. You mean to turn everyone Akashic? Not turn, Mythos. Turn back. For too long has mankind been led astray by their clamorous wills. It is time they return to a world of quiet equality, where they might once more know salvation. Salvation? And abandon everything we hold dear? We don't need your salvation. We'll save ourselves, and we'll do it on our own terms. Not yours, and not your gods. With every defiant expression of your will, the tighter the chains of consciousness become. But perhaps that fact may be put to use. <sighs> Clive! The faster it binds you to the remaining dominance, the stronger your hunger will become. Until it leads you back to the only answer there ever was. Mayhap not by the path my master intended, but back all the same. Ash is not far. I could freeze a path. You're in no fit state. Probably not, but I can try. Don't look back!
I hope the others are safe. The Enterprise was clear of the gap when we fell. They made it, Jill. And they will have seen the ice where it led. We need only wait till dawn. This is the second time Barnabas has bested me. I'm powerless against him. And maybe there really is nothing else for it but to give yourself to his master. Only you won't do that. The Clive I know would never do that. So you believe. But do you really know me? If what Barnabas said was true, then... I'm more monster than man. And each time I summon the flames from within, I burn away the things that make me who I am. Do you, though? Think of what you've used that power for, of all the people you've saved. It, it doesn't matter how or by whom it was granted, only how you choose to use it. And you've chosen to use it for good, haven't you? I've also used it to kill. What if that's my purpose? What if it's all I'm good for? Still that same boy I grew up with. Always so eager to save everyone around you, and yet always so alone. Because you failed to realize the one thing that needed saving most of all. You, Clive. You. You never once took the time to save yourself. Myself? I think I might be beyond saving. No one is beyond saving. Provided they want to be saved. You fight to survive. You survive so that you may protect those you love. It's what you do. What you've always done. And I know you're not about to change. So I'm going to help you. To give you what you need to protect us all.
happens to until my last breath. Clive. I promise you, Jill. And I promise you, Clive, that I will be there, no matter what you must become. I know. I never thought a smile could bring me so much joy. What of Barnabas? Do we pursue him? No. Our paths will cross again soon enough. Whether we like it or not. Besides, there is something we must do first. Of course. Drake's spine. The last Mother Crystal. The Einherja is at the bottom of the sea. Walud won't dare move on Storm without her. But they know we're coming now. We'll need a plan. And a damn good one at that. Then let's go home and find one. Ash will have to wait. says Odin split the sea in two. She's always been partial to a tall tale. But there's tall, and then there's tall. I struggle to believe it myself. I see your uncle isn't with you. He stayed with the Enterprise. After our brush with the Einherja, she was in urgent need of repair. And my uncle knows a shipwright in Randalar. We're to join him there when we're ready to sell for Ash. You sure that's wise? 
Last I heard, the place was still overrun with a Kashyyyk. Show me a city where that isn't true. Ultima's plague is spreading. We're running out of time, aren't we? We've done our best to shore up that hideaway. But I doubt a few planks will stop what's coming. Still, we'll keep at it. Every little helps, I suppose. Let's hope so. Joshua. How are you feeling, Joshua? Better than I was. But not nearly as well as you should be. Your cuts and burns may have healed, but your body still bears the burden of every spell cast. Then what would you have had me do? It was no ordinary foe we faced. It was the Warden of Darkness. Yet still, it was not enough. The King could have ended me at any moment, but instead chose to toy with me like a curl does a mouse. You... Yeah. you underestimate yourself. Oh, it was crystal clear. Only one man established his dominance that day, and that man was Barnabas. I'm sorry, brother. That was... ill-spoken. It's just... I have never felt so powerless. And when so many are looking to us for strength, perhaps... Uh, perhaps the Prince feels the same. Is this place? <gasps> Don't move. It's fresh from the well. Grandmother told me spirits sometimes get lost, and that the lanterns guide them to their proper place. I set one on the river for her when she passed away. Was it you who guided my hand then, Ultima? No, not you. This is my doing. 
my fault, my sin to bear. And for it, I must atone. Your hurts are healing nicely. It was my poultices that saw you well. You make them. And sell them, or try to. Earns me enough for bread, most days. Forgive me. I have nothing to... I know, but I couldn't just leave you lying there. <sighs> You're going then? Of course. I'm healed. Thanks to you and your poultices. Will you promise to come back and visit? Phoenix, it would seem that I owe you my wings. Perhaps he can find an answer. You will be returning to Walud soon, I gather. I see no reason to wait. Then neither do I. I can think of a few, but I doubt they'll stop you. You will take your medicine. Of course, Lady Tyre. Set on leaving already, are you? How long will it take us to get back to Ash? Dunno, about the same amount of time it took us to get here. Maybe less, if your uncle can find someone trustworthy to patch up the Enterprise. All depends on where we're putting into port, mind. Yes, it's not as if we can put ashore wherever we choose. We have to assume that the whole of Ash is hostile, and that we'll be attacked on sight. Then we must find a place they won't think to look. And I have an idea who might know of one. The Professor! I'll go and tell you come in! While you're plotting our course, I'll be in the shelves with your lawsman. I wish to pick his brains about Ultima. Then I'll talk to Karen about supplies for the journey. They may not be easy to come by in Ash. Your brother's body won't take much more of this recklessness. You know that, don't you? I do. I still say it were a compliment. Ah, Clive. I was wondering when you'd arrive. Please tell me you've come to take our young prodigy here off my hands. I'm not here for Mid. I need information on Ash. Then why not ask Molly if you can look in one of her ovens? <sighs> Go on. As soon as the Enterprise is ready, we'll be setting out for Drake's spine. And we're going to need a safe place to land. Preferably one that won't see my ship blown to shit and splinters. If it were that easy, do you think Walud would have resisted invasion for so long? Very little is known of Ash, and the information we do have is spotty and outdated. We have the good King Barnabas to thank for that. Walud's borders have been closed to outsiders since the day he seized the throne. If there is anywhere safe to land, you won't find it on my map. Then tell us what we will find. I'm sure you know better than we do. But no splinters! All right, all right, if it will get you out of my hair. But interrupt me, and it's over. Understood? Barnabas Tharm, the one they call the Last King. Understand him? 
and you will understand the kingdom of Walud. Barnabas was only a boy when he arrived from beyond the southern seas, and barely a man before he united the ragged tribes of Ash. And having unleashed them upon the formidable Veldemark, he set his throne upon the ancient kingdom's ruins. The victory sent shockwaves around Valathia. Tales of Odin's might spreading through every court, parlor, and drinking hall in the realm. Note that this was in the year 843, and that the king still sits upon his throne some 40 years later, quite untouched by time. Walud's recent inaction left many wondering if Odin had lost his appetite for war. And yet here we are. The Einherjar was committed to the fray, a bold declaration of intent. Orcs swarm around Drake's Fang, and throngs of Akashic haunt canvas streets. Though how precisely the havoc they wreak serves Walud remains unclear. Regardless, if the order to attack truly came from King Barnabas, then one thing is certain. Walud has achieved the impossible and made bedfellows of beast men and the ether adult alike. All of which is a roundabout way of saying that you will be in unknown territory when you set foot on Ash. Much of the continent has already been lost to the blight, and what few ports remain will be fiercely guarded. And that is to say naught of its natural defenses. Offshore currents will cast an ill-equipped ship out to sea one moment, and dash it against the rocks the next. But then the Enterprise is anything but ill-equipped. And Mid has made land there before. Now, if only there were someone with an intimate knowledge of the Shadow Coast, and where a daring gentleman might put ashore. You see, Clive, you had the answer all along. Do you think you can get us back to that beach, mid? Picked you up from it, didn't I? Not that it were easy. The currents were a rape bastard. But then, if it wasn't hard, it wouldn't be worth doing, would it? Well said. Thank you, Lady Vivian. If a few morsels of common knowledge and a sprinkling of tavern talk are worthy of your thanks, I wonder what genuine intelligence might earn me. Probably more visits. Mid, I need everyone in the ale hall now. I'll fetch Joshua from the shelves. Aye, aye, Captain. Covered in nicks and lumps, the lot of them. It's a wonder they can still walk. I have no reason to assume. Clive, you must listen to this. Rosman, tell him. Do you recall when we spoke before on the divinity of Ultima? Well, it inspired me to delve deeper into the subject. And what I discovered appears to agree with the findings of His Grace. You will recall that my quest to uncover Ultima's origins began with the mural at Phoenix Gate. But while I've always known it to be important, its secrets have heretofore eluded me. Now, however, I believe I know where to find a more complete example, one that will reveal all we seek. Master Clive, have you ever in your travels chanced to hear of the Circle of Malleus? I would think not, if you have. But there was once a time when the faith flourished, the oldest known religion in the Twins, and though its popularity eventually waned on storm, hints of its dogma remain embedded in more modern faiths such as the Crystalline Orthodox. Wait. You said it waned on storm. What of Ash? Religious monuments are often torn down or repurposed when new faiths rise to prominence. But if no new faith arose, then perhaps the ancient temples might still stand. 
And so, you see now why I must accompany you to Walud. It would appear the past still has much to teach us. Though in this case, it would not have been possible without the musings of Moss. <laughs> to think that you carried a copy of my old mentor's chronicles all along. I am relieved to discover it in good hands. I shall guard it with my life. Joshua, if you're finished here, join me in the ale hall. I need to speak to everyone before we leave. Right away. Mid said I could ride the Enterprise next. No, she didn't. She said I could. My apologies. By now you've all heard where we're going and why. So I won't bother you with the boring details, only the important ones. If we attempt to approach Stone here by sea, there's a good chance we'll be sighted and fall prey to the capital's artillery. So instead, we'll disembark on the southwest coast and make for Drake's spine on foot. I say we, but... It's highly likely the entirety of Ash is under the rule of Ultima. A large party would only attract unwanted attention. As well as slow our march, and require supplies which may be difficult to obtain. Only Joshua and I will be going. And a scout. Preferably a good one. Gav, do you know of any? You bet your ass I do. Might still borrow some of Lady Vivian's maps, though. Just in case, like. Once you've dropped us off at the Shadow Coast, you need to retreat into neutral waters, fly merchant colors, and stay inconspicuous. If you sense any danger at all, you leave us behind and return to Storm. Inconspicuous is my middle name. But like hell am I leaving anyone behind. The ship ain't going nowhere till your scurvy mugs are smiling on deck. Jill. The Enterprise will appear a tempting target for Royalists and Pirates alike. You're to stop anyone boarding. Don't worry. I'll keep the ship and her crew safe. You'll be needing passage home, after all. But... Very well. If there are no questions, I'll see you all at the docks. Let me know when you're leaving. I want a word before you go. Of course. Man wish his friend farewell. Just wanted to let you know that I'll keep things in order while you're off saving the world. I'll hold you to that. Reckon it'll be a long walk to the capital if we follow the cliffs. I'll scout ahead, see if I can't find us an inland route. Clive. Mm -hmm. There's something I've been meaning to ask. 
You took her icon, didn't you? Yes, I did. She understood. Oh, she understood. Understood that you decided to save the world all on your own, and that you'd die without her power. How dare you make her choose? You knew damn well she'd never refuse you. But I will. You can't keep pushing us away, Clive. The world is ours to save, not yours. I used my gift because I thought it was the right thing to do. And you truly believe this will save you? Will save us all? I do. Then so be it. Just don't forget, you're not alone. I think I've found us a trail. Uh, did I miss something? Only that Joshua didn't. I don't get it. Always wanted to visit Ash. We're in Waluda territory now. Don't expect a warm welcome. Oh, I don't know, Clive. That castle over there looks inviting enough. Shall we sample its inhabitants' hospitality? Remember what I said about warm welcomes, Gav? This place is as dead as Grieger's ghost. I knew I smelled something. I see only orcs and cash in here. Let's hope the villagers make it out in time.
It's Camber all over again. Where the hell are the Royalists? Seems you were right about that welcome after all, Clive. Delegation. We should send a warning to the others. No. My uncle will have an eye on the coast. I trust he'll find a way to entertain any uninvited guests. Our mark is Drake's spine, and there's a lot of road between us and it. We press on to stone here. Aye, you never know. It might not be an Esther Slaver and monsters. <sighs> Clive, you must go on ahead without me. This stronghold is as old as Phoenix Gate, perhaps older. It may yet hide Ultima's remaining secrets, and if we are to best him, they must be unearthed. All right. Stay out of trouble. I always do, mostly. You sure about this? About leaving my brother on his own? Of course. Mostly. Lady Vivian's map is so old, it's hard to tell which way is up. But if I'm right, we're not far from a village called Eastler. Then we make our way there, resupply, and wait for Joshua. <sighs> Ugh, this place reeks like a marble's asshole. Though I'm guessing it's not the smell that will kill us. Ugh! <laughs> 
Breath. Uh, go and look down, Torval. <laughs> that must be Estla. What do you think, Clive? Then we're too late. Damn it. They're all turned. There's nothing we can do. I wouldn't say nothing. No quarter down! No quarter! Stay down. <laughs> 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 
like this? A question for later, now. Gav. Gav! Don't tell me there's more of the bastards. Oh, fuck. A 
Have you come to watch, Odin? <laughs> Bound for stone here. Good. My master awaits you in the capital, though I cannot allow you to attend him in your present state. And how are you going to stop us? Why, with this! What did you do? If the vessel would see the path opened, it has but to ask. I shall see that my master's prize is made. Presentable. mind telling me what the fuck just happened? <sighs> oh, you've got to be. How are we supposed to get through that? We seek an audience with the king. If His Majesty wants me to come and ask him, then that is exactly what I'll do. Before you go practicing your petition, we don't even know where the fucker went. How about we cool our heads and think this through, eh? Maybe there's something here we can use. I thought we got them all. So did I. Not turned, all right? Who? Edda, if a 
forgive me for asking, but what went on here? It all started when the skies changed. The elders said it was the Arche. One by one, people went mad. Minds taken by the ether. Till only I remained. By then, I was too far alone to run. And, and then the nights came. And I didn't know what to do. Parents told us when we misbehave about how the heavens would grow dark before the land took her last breath. The end of the world. You said the others went mad, but where did they go? They. they all left. East to the tower, to Reverie, the elders, the healer, the blacksmith, my husband. You're thinking he did this? Of course. Who else could it be? You were in Canva. You saw what he did to the people. But then what about her? How come her nut hasn't cracked? The baby, perhaps? Could be protecting her from the ether. I can't think of any other explanation. You mean... it's a bearer? It won't matter what it is once Ultima's magic takes hold. Time's running out. This tower, that's where we'll find the king. I knew it. It's the same as Phoenix Gate. Which means at the end of these stairs should be... vessel Ifrit, Garuda, Ramu, Shiva, Titan, Bahamut, Odin, even Leviathan the Lost is here. But where is the Phoenix? the founder.
So that's what you want, isn't it, Ultima? So that's how it's gonna be then. I'm not asking, Gav. I need you to stay with Edda. What? I must do this alone. If I don't return, you're to find Joshua and make for the Enterprise. Understood? <sighs> I. Don't you go dying on me. Sid's name suits your miserable mug better than mine. Don't worry. I haven't finished with it yet. If Barnabas is controlling the Akashic, then wherever he goes, they'll follow. And so will I.
This is it, boy. I've come for you, Barnabas. Stay close, Torgo.
if I were Barnabas, where would I be? The top. So I could look down on the world.
anymore. Bravo! 
Almost there. The blade must ever feed if her edge is to remain keen. Butcher. What care you for these worthless creatures? They are nothing. Weak from the moment of their conception, ever longing for power not theirs to command, they turn unfailingly upon themselves. Like sheep. They roam in filthy flocks, eager to trample those few gifted a fleece of gold. Or that they might feel contentment with their pitiful existence. Prejudice and persecution, severance and strife, every earthly wrong springs from the malice in men's hearts. Malice born of the pain and suffering that is free will. Its corruption is gnawed at your being from the very moment of your birth. You're wrong. It is no corruption. It is who I am. Every choice I make, right or wrong, gives me reason to carry on. And carry on I shall. Not as a puppet, but as a man. Which are you? <laughs> there was a time I too thought those the only choices. What? Long ago, God granted man the gift of magic. And with that gift did he build great civilizations. Yet over time, man lost sight of the gift's true meaning, stepping from the path of shared prosperity to one of avarice. He abandoned his creator for sword and flame, and through his folly, beckoned the blight. Yet, there were those few who refused to turn their eyes from the heavens, and they prayed to God that he might lead them back to righteousness. And the Lord, he did answer. Before the worthy shall the gates of paradise open, and so did I spread my arms to the ether and cast my soul upon its gentle waters. I gave myself unto him. The Lord charged me thus. If your kind are to find salvation, they must be made to serve. You see, paradise lies but a single step away, 
Could we only take it? Could we only leave our transgressions behind? For none save the pure of heart and mind may set foot in the new world. I will save us. But it all begins and ends with you. You are the key, Mythos. And with this humble offering, shall I prove my faith once more. So you forsook your kingdom. You forsook yourself to serve. Tell me, how is that living? <clears throat> what you seek to provide is not salvation. It's anything but. Life is about always having a choice. Take that away, and we might as well be dead. <laughs> Very well. Come then. Show us the strength of your will. It's not the strength of my will that should worry you. But the weakness of yours. If you think your will the stronger, prove it. By this day's end, you shall know. his vessel, and you cling to this foolish notion of hope, when there is none.
have been shown the path. Now you must follow it. Free yourself, Mythos. You will not defeat me otherwise. We'll see.
weapon of your weakness? <laughs> My apologies. You are not the fool I took you for. Ah! Ah! 
know the truth. It is I who stand victorious. My will that prevailed. Your will? No. It was his. Clive Rossfield. my own. <laughs> you relinquish nothing. 
nothing. What was it, if not will, that made you strive for a new world? Strive to win your master's approval? I... You were shown a fantasy, and you chose to believe it. But you were wrong. There is no world but the one we live in. And that world... That world is worth saving. Even if it means killing a god. Just as the Lord's Mother Crystals have fulfilled theirs. Come, Clive Rossfield. Take what is rightfully yours. Become one with God. No. Yourself. Face me! How does it feel to consume your rival's strength? To gorge yourself on their being? To edge step by trembling step ever closer to the divine? With or without a will, you are still but a vessel. Our vessel. Behold. How your body shudders in anticipation of its fate. Oh, it's not yours yet. No. Come then, O oh wayward child. We shall await you upon the back of the first worm. There, all shall end and begin again.
me, ask them! Since when was I can have all one to hide when there was a fight to be had? Since they stripped me of my rank and banished me from the battlefield. Now I'm stuck right in the backsides of this one while the city burns and my wife tells off the man half my age! And then you turn up! What the hell are you doing here anyway? What indeed? <laughs> The enemy numbers 200,000 or more counting the orcs. There are simply not enough soldiers bouncing in the capital to repel an army of that size. Then, one of the central keep, held by a contingent of soldiers and bearers from the surrounding boroughs. They are the sole reason it still stands. And all it took was an army on their doorstep to bring them together. The prospect of death does put things into perspective. <laughs> perspective. Perhaps it's what we've lacked all along. Our numbers are few, but I shall rally as many of my dragoons as I'm able. You, apprise the Lord Strategist of the state of the city's defenses. Yes, Your Radiance. And you would fight alongside us? I owe the Phoenix a debt. <laughs> Does this vouch for my nephews? Aye. But I still have my doubts about you. Which we can discuss later. Indeed. You said you had men garrisoned in the keep. Captain, do you know how many yet remain? Allow me to confirm. Commander? Whatever their number, Randalar will be needed. Gather the them bodies all. and build a pyre in the courtyard. Quickly. Terence. My lord. You will find a girl there. A girl? We are in the middle of a war. I owe her my life, and I always pay my debts. You are to see that she is provided for. Dion, I cannot leave. But you shall. If I am ever to be worthy of the forgiveness of our people, then I must earn it. And I must earn it by my hand, and my hand alone. Know that I do not ask this lightly. And know that I will do it. Farewell, Terence.
alive. Thank fuck. You all right? I am. But I'm a damn sight better for seeing you, Joshua. And Barnabas. The king is dead. Oh, they're... they're all... <laughs> they are, but so is their killer. He can't hurt anyone anymore. You safe. I'm sorry, Clive. You know I want nothing more than to go with you. I do. But I'm glad you're heading back to the Enterprise nonetheless. And not just for Edda's sake. Our people need to know what happened here. You can count on me. As can she, I hope. Thank you, me lord. Do you think that was wise? Wiser than leaving a woman with child alone in the Deadlands. They'll be safer at the hideaway. For now, at least. This land is overrun with Akashic. The king himself was long turned, albeit by choice. All to serve Ultima, in his damnable quest to forge the perfect vessel. The chaos Barnabas wreaked upon nation after nation. How many were killed for this? Ah. Oh. He didn't consider it killing. Or a mercy of sorts. A way to end their suffering. He truly wanted to save mankind, and ultimately use that. As he uses us. But why us? What are we? What are we? We are dominance. That is our fate. But that doesn't mean we have to accept it, which is why we fight. For the right to deny it. Is that not so? It is. For our sins. Barnabas said something else. That the Mother Crystals were Ultimas. Ultimas? Are you certain? We know that the Mother Crystals have been leading the land of Ether, And we also know that it's this which hastens the spread of the Blight. But what I cannot fathom is what Ultima stands to gain from that. What did you find at the Stronghold? The truth about Ultima's prize. For so long, 
I believed it to be you. And you alone. Yet, it is not merely a fruit that he desires, but a fruit and phoenix both. That which we became in the skies over Twinside. Only when the twin flames are joined, shall his vessel be complete. Quite why he needs a vessel is another question. Unless there is something he cannot achieve without one. Something his immaterial form precludes. Something requiring an unthinkable amount of ether and a body resilient enough to channel it. If I did not know better, brother, I would think that he meant to cast a spell. A spell a thousand years in the making. A spell to end all spells. And he cannot do it without us. Nor without the Mother Crystals. But if we destroy them all, we will stop not only the Blight, but Ultima as well. We stick to the plan then. Only this time, we face him together. Well, it's a long walk to stone here. Let's not keep Ultima waiting. When...